Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this special council meeting to order. Joining me in the chamber is uh, our clerk, Ms. Defoe, and our deputy clerk, Mr. Bantock. And at this time, I'll turn the meeting over to Ms. Defoe. Through you, Your Worship, item two is declarations of pecuniary interest. Are there any declarations? And if so, please state the general nature thereof. Seeing none. Item three is adjournment to a public meeting under the Municipal Act 2001. And there is a motion that the special council meeting adjourn to a public meeting under the Municipal Act to hear all interested persons with respect to amendments proposed to the business licensing bylaw 187-2004 and to reconvene following the public meeting. The mover for such. Thank you, Councillor Beattie. Second by Councillor Henderson. All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. Thank you very much. I will call the public meeting to order. The purpose of this meeting is to give Council and the public an opportunity to hear from all interested persons on the proposed amendments to the business licensing, licensing bylaw 187 2004. The order of procedure for this meeting will be as follows. Staff will, will provide an overview of the proposed amendments. Council may ask questions, but are cautioned not to make comments nor to take a position at this public meeting. Registered delegations will be asked for their presentations, comments, and questions. Questions and comments will be asked for, I'm sorry, uh, questions and comments from the Q&A will be read in by the clerk's office staff member. The public is advised that comments expressed and written materials presented are a matter of public record for full disclosure. Are there any questions as to the procedure? Seeing none, we'll, pro we'll proceed with the meeting and I'll invite Deputy Clerk, Mr. Bantock to make the staff presentation. Mr. Bantock. Through your worship. Amendments to the city's business licensing bylaw are being proposed and brought forward to this public meeting to increase the minimum commercial general liability requirement from 2 million to 5 million for all business license types covered under the bylaw. For the past few years, the city's insurer has been recommending such increased insurance requirements for the city when it comes to third party relationships. This is mainly based around industry trends and increasing liability risks involving the third party relationships. While implementation of this has been gradually introduced across the organization, mainly in part due to the pandemic, flexible wording currently contained in the bylaw did allow staff to roll out increased insurance requirements for the outdoor cafes as a part of the 2022 patio program. To continue the rollout, staff received clarification from the city's insurer that it would be prudent to have the same requirements applied to all business license types. Overall, the city's insurer feels that the 5 million requirement will better protect the city should an incident occur. It is also an important distinction to note here that this is not a recently determined recommendation, uh, nor is it one that is being applied only to business licenses. Due to time constraints with these amendments for 2023 licensees, staff previously sought and received approval from council to extend 2022 licenses until March 31st of this year. Prior to this meeting, proper notice was given in accordance with the city's notice policy in addition to social media and communications directly with 2022 license holders. Uh, to my knowledge at this point in time, uh, no comments have been received by staff with respect to the proposed insurance amendments. And should there be any questions, I'm happy to address them tonight where possible and anything uh, remaining unanswered can be addressed in the follow-up staff report at a future committee meeting. Thank you, Deputy Clerk Bantock. Any questions from council at this time? Councillor Henderson, please go ahead. I'm not sure if it's too early in the presentation, but Carmen sent out um, exactly what I was gonna ask tonight is, why is the city worried about going from two to 5 million? Are we responsible for um, anything that happens on say the bed and breakfast property, et cetera? And she did a good explanation of that. And I would appreciate if she could do that for the public so they would um, have a clear understanding of why it's important that it's being raised from two to 5 million. Director Kruger, I see you're here. So go right ahead, thank you. 
Can you turn your volume up just a bit? Um, it's very faint, very faint. Okay, um, I'm not sure. Do you want me to proceed or do you want me to? If you just maybe get a little closer, you're a little bit better and we'll see what we can do. Try that. Okay. Um, so thank you, Sue, your worship. Um, I, I can, I'm happy to try to address this. So it's really just uh, a, a matter of uh, what I would call sharing the risk of uh, incidences that may occur uh, with, with respect to these relationships. The concept of joint and several liability exists not just within a uh, municipal world, but it's pretty prominent in the municipal world, whereby um, if there's a claim made where it names two parties or more, um, the deeper pockets often get the, uh, <laughs> the um, uh, um, attributed with most of the uh, settlement amount. So it's really just to spread the risk between the parties involved in the cases where there's multiple um, uh, defendants named. So that, that's the gist of it. Um, the, the increase from two to five million is also to, to benefit ultimately the, uh, the, pro, the, the uh, individual or the third party that uh, this relates to, because that would mean that they're carrying a sufficient coverage uh, level in the event that there's a, a claim against them. Um, we've uh, received multiple um, feed, uh, multiple times we've received feedback from our insurer, but also our legal counsel, whereby $2 million is not an average claim anymore. Um, the claim sizes are quite a bit larger than that. So it's just a, it's just a, a mechanism to protect the city and, and the third parties uh, against such claims. Thank you, Ms. Kruger. Anything further from council at this time? Just... Oh, Councillor Henderson, go ahead, thank you. Just a follow up. Now, I don't know if this has been solved, um, but I've heard that some of the businesses or the bed and breakfasts were having trouble finding someone to insure them for the 5 million. Do you know if that's been sorted out? I'll take, I'll send that over to our clerk, Mr. our deputy clerk, Mr. Bantock, go ahead. Uh, through your worship, I would just note uh, that the purpose of tonight's meeting is um, just to discuss uh, the insurance requirement uh, adjustments uh, proposed for business licenses. Um, so if there is any, uh, any discussion um, for uh, insurance requirements related to other business types uh, should be reserved for a later time. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Anything further? Seeing none, uh, we will move along with the presentation by delegations and, and I believe there is one registered delegation of Whitlock and McLean. And Ms. Defoe, go ahead. Through your worship, yes, that is correct. And we are working to connect them now. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Charlie and Santana, go right ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, my name is Santana McLean. I'm a co-owner and piercer of Lucky Chance Studio. I'm Charlie Whitlock. I'm also the co-owner and tattooer at Lucky Chance Studio. And uh, we just built, uh, with the help of friends and family, we built a little downtown studio in Stratford in November of 2021. The welcome that we received from not just the community, but the city itself know that let us know that we were making the right choice in throwing everything that we have in this. In just a year, we have created a safe space, one where those who walk into our shop instantly feel at ease. We now have regular clients that depend on us and the quality work that we do. Throwing everything we have into this wasn't, isn't an exaggeration. We put our studio together piece by piece, and we're continuing to make improvements all the time. It's our goal to do professional work, doing what we do uh, clean and professional and uh, doing what, it, sorry, I'm sorry. Um, it's doing what we love. We're doing what we love and we're trying to make people happy. We really believe in giving the best to our clients. <clears throat> so we have to ask, what does increasing the minimum insurance to $5 million do for us or our clients? How does it help the public? Raising our insurance will definitely raise our monthly costs and make it harder for us to give our best to our clients. We aren't a chain and the cost of everything has gone up all at once. Adding another expense to the constantly rising price of doing business could be the end of us. It's just the two of us putting all of our energy into our small shop. 
We want to keep putting in as much as we can so that there's no doubt when you get tattooed or pierced how it will turn out. We aren't the only tattoo shop questioning why the minimum should be raised with most shops in Stratford having very few employees and strict regulations to prevent the need for so much coverage. There are courses and seminars that would better serve the safety and care of Stratford by improving body modification knowledge and sanitary practices. Maybe by requiring some of these crucial courses, which are now considered by many in our industry to be standard, there would be less need for a $5 million minimum, encouraging safety and knowledge so that it becomes more difficult for someone to merely buy their way into Stratford. More insurance for body piercing and tattooing makes little sense when you consider that our industry is constantly thriving for more safety and transparency. We would ask that you consider changing bylaw 187-2004 by instead adding course requirements such as bloodborne pathogens as an industry standard, uh, an industry standard in many cities across Canada. Thank you for your time. Thank you to the both of you. I'm not sure if Mr. Bantock wants to answer the question. I, I believe it was the the answer was addressed uh, through Councillor Henderson's comment. But Mr. Bantock, anything you want to add? Through your worship, uh, I would just say at this time uh, is the recommendation of the city's insurer to apply this equally across all of the business license types. Uh, and as the director of corporate services noted, uh, the change from two million to five million is. Um, really uh, at the heart of it is for risk mitigation for both parties, um, just ensuring that uh, there aren't any cases uh, in terms of if claims or incidents occur, uh, that you have a party being underinsured. Uh, and then it also uh, helps the uh, insured uh, ensure that they have proper coverage. Um, as it was noted that uh, the 2 million liability is uh, no longer sufficient in many cases. Thank you, Mr. Bantock. Anything further? And I thank both of you to, for coming to council and presenting. And this will be, this will come forward at a future uh, infrastructure transportation and safety committee meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Briscoe, I see your hand. Thank you uh, through your worship. And thank you so much for your presentation. Your passion is evident and thank you for the art you bring to the community is, and the community you've created. Um, do you have an estimate of what the increased cost to you would be? Um, possibly. 400 bucks a month extra on top of what we're paying what? probably. If we, we can, if, if we, we can, can get, get it, it, it's really hard to um, get tattoo insurance. Yeah. <laughs> so we would have to um, talk to our, uh, uh, the person who. Our broker. Our broker who uh, procures our insurance for us. If we could even get 5 million, especially considering it's just two people. No, no employees, it's just we us. to over 18, and I don't pierce anything under 13. So we try to mitigate. I'd like to add also, I've been problems. tattooing for 25 years, and I've never even known someone that's been sued. Not once, not once in 25 years have I worked with someone or known another tattooer who's actually been taken to court for their work. Thank you. Anything further from council? Thank you again uh, for, for presenting. Thanks so much. Thank you for letting us talk. Next item is, uh, I'm going to turn to Ms. Defoe. Are there any uh, questions um, or comments that need to be read into the meeting? Uh, through your worship, at this time, I do not see any questions or comments submitted in the Q&A. Okay. So seeing none, then council, City Council intends to consider the proposed amendments at a future infrastructure, transportation and safety committee meeting for full discussion of the amendments after reviewing comments received from the public at this time. If anyone would like to receive further notice of this matter, please email clerks at stratford.ca. A video of this meeting will be posted to the city's website. This public meeting is adjourned. And Ms. Defoe, I'll turn it back to you. Through you, Worship, returning to your special council meeting agenda, item four is reading of the bylaws, and there is one bylaw listed being the confirmatory bylaw. It requires first and second reading and third and final reading. Mover for first and second. Thank you, Council Burback, second by Council Hunter. All in favor? 
Opposed, if any, and that's unanimous. And third and final. Moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Councillor Henderson. All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's unanimous. And our final item is that a motion uh, to adjourn the January 16, 2023 special council meeting. Moved by Councillor um, Burback and second by Councillor McCabe. All in favor? And opposed, if any, and that's unanimous. Thank you everybody for attending and we're adjourned.